Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really cool knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Max Ace Black Mirror. What's so cool about that? It's probably titanium and M390 and carbon fiber, right? And it's just a really good ergonomic design, and it looks like it's got a pretty utilitarian blade shape. You're gonna say the same stuff that you usually do. There's there's something special about this one, and uh, I'm gonna tell you about it. So hang tight. This this is definitely one to pay attention to. Thanks so much to Max Ace for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, this guy might be available. When I brought this thing up on a live stream and told people about it, it seemed to go pretty quickly. So I'm hoping that uh, Max Ace restocks with people like Blade HQ so you can pick these up in the USA. Uh, you can go to Max Ace's website, but I don't know where they ship them from. So I'll try and make sure that there is at least a link that you can go look at the listing for down in the description. Let's go ahead and get a uh, measurement of this knife. So the overall length of the Max Ace Black Mirror is coming in at seven and a half inches. Blade length is coming in at a pretty substantial 3.35 inches. I'm pretty happy with that. And then your cutting edge is coming in at about three, uh, well, let's say three and an eighth. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here that this guy is definitely, I don't say right in between. I mean, it's bigger than the Rat 2, but it's not nearly as big as the Rat 1. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. This guy's a little bit longer than the Para 3, about a quarter of an inch, even though because of how we have the camera set up here, it looks to be exactly the same, but remember it's at an angle, right? The PM2 is a quarter inch shorter than the Black Mirror. Let's put it up against the Demco AD 20.5. We are definitely in the same ballpark here. I think the AD 20.5 is seven and a half inches. And then finally, Let's do the Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. I think this is going to be about the exact same overall length as the Bug Out. How is the action on this knife? So, Max Ace knives are made in China, and uh, I'm going to tell you, as long as I've been reviewing, every time I get a Max Ace, I am blown away by not just the design, but the quality and execution. Max Ace makes some seriously good stuff. Um, I, I, I'm really shocked at, at how well everything is tuned and how, how well everything is polished. This knife is very smooth and very consistent action, and it's closing in, after playing with it for a little bit, it is closing in on being fall shut. The main thing here is that from the time that the detent ball reaches the face of the blade to the uh, to the point where the detent is sucking that blade down into the closed position, it is consistent. There's no lumps or bumps. There's no tight areas or ultra smooth areas that seem to sort of contrast with each other. No, it is consistent, which is what I look for. I like that a lot. You can absolutely access this little opening sort of oval whether you want to do the regular flick or the reverse flick, I think it's a little easier to do the reverse flick on this guy. Closing it with one hand is a breeze, and if you're going to do this flick, the thumb needs to go more that way than up. Um, but the reverse flick should be second nature to those of you who have been enjoying Spyderco knives for any amount of time. Really good is the action. Uh, that was a very long-winded way of saying, the action's really good, right? Like, that's... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, welcome to my channel. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the spider co pair of three by the way I know there's a whole bunch of you right now watching this after having received this knife <laughs> So hello to all of you sitting there on the couch not watching this because you're trying to figure out whether or not to buy it You've already bought it and you're just looking for reaffirmation, right? I get it. I used to do the same thing <laughs> uh, Let's see here thickness. Yeah, it's about the same perhaps just a hair thinner length and height up against the PM2 and the pair of three can see here, definitely no longer than the pair of three. It's about the same height-wise, though. It's definitely going to be a, a winner here. Nowhere near as tall as either, so no issues there. It's really going to be pretty nice in the pocket. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Is my scale okay today? Let's find out. 
It really? Okay, last night it said low. You can see here we're running low on everything. Um, <laughs> everything I have is running out of batteries. 3.53 ounces, which is pretty darn close to the 3.35 inch blade length. So the ratios are almost, almost perfect as far as, you know, if you subscribe to the whole uh, one ounce of knife for each ounce of, I'm sorry, inch of blade, right? Uh, so a perfect ratio would be 3.5 ounces uh, for overall knife weight to 3.5 inches of blade. It's very close considering it is compact, uh, not too tall, not too thick, pretty reasonable on weight. This is gonna be pretty preferable for a lot of people. We're gonna go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here. This is one of those knives where the scales are certainly um, a little bit, uh, <laughs> are a little bit thicker than the blade stock. Um, we're gonna turn it this way so we can actually read it. I do have batteries coming for this, um, but uh, your blade stock thickness is coming in at about 117,000, so not a thick blade at all. How about a hardware check? Let's get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot is going to be a T8. How about the lock bar insert screw? That'll be a T8. How about the screw that goes through the backspacer to the other side? That'll be a T8. Um, this is a Chicago end. Uh, if there is another screw under here, it's probably just one. There's, there's also gonna be a hidden screw, yeah, for the pocket clip, and I can see in there that's also a T8. This is a an incredibly uh, simple construction with, in my opinion, the right size fasteners, so Good job, Max Ace, but they always do that. Max Ace seems to get this kind of stuff right. And it's not because I'm like, this is what I like, so you should... They were already doing things that were to my preference. So I I've been gravitating towards Max Ace stuff for a long time. Uh, really good. Really, really good here. Real simple construction. Shouldn't be difficult for anybody. Okay, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. It's a good looking knife. I like it. Not reinventing the wheel by any means, right? If you're still holding on to the edge of your seat, I am gonna say a lot of the stuff that you would expect me to say. This is carbon fiber, it is titanium, and it is M390. We have chamfered edges. We have a full 3D milled pocket clip that has been anodized gold in this case. You do have a few options, blue, gold, or just plain, and they also have a plain one with no inlay, right? Carbon fiber is good. It's not that cheap, shiny looking stuff. This is a nice kind of marbly carbon fiber. I kind of like the little, reminds me of, uh, uh, if you ever watch the drain in the shower and then as the uh, the water drips down through the those the mesh of the drain and it starts to look like fish eyes, <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> I can't be the only one who's done that, right? Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of and it looks good. We have an enormous amount of access to that lock bar. Look at this, right? No question. They're like, here you go. Come on in, right? Easy. That's wonderful. That's what we like to see. Ergonomic lines, this is just kind of shaped like a tiny banana. It's fine. It's comfortable because we have a nice, big, chunky, fat, flat clip. I don't want to say fat. Flat clip, right? Edges nicely knocked down around the clip. All of this knocked down to the point that it's really not going to bother you. I do appreciate that they added a little bit of jimping right there so that while you are choked up, it does give you a little bit of traction before you approach the blade. And you know what? That sharpening tool is large enough. You're definitely, you've got a few indicators, like sensory indicators, before you accidentally run your finger up on that blade. But let's talk about the positioning of the blade because the ergonomics are blah, 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 and good, and everything's fine here, right? This blade, where does it, uh, where does it land? Like if you're putting it on a flat surface here, right? Imagine this is a countertop. Laying the blade flat down, guess what? The first contact point, it is possible to have it contact the back of the knife first. Why is that important? Anybody who works with food, I'm not saying that this is the ultimate food prep knife, you know, but for, you know, with a pocket knife, oftentimes the issue is that where the blade initially lands, right? You can see here with the rat, the initial contact point is way up there, right? Or like the uh, Spyderco, Pair of three, initial contact is more back here, right? Almost, it's getting close, but it's about right here. When you're working with food, you want to be able to lay the, you want the, the first part of the sharpened edge to be able to contact whatever it is that you're, you know, laying on. So if you've got this over the edge of the table, I mean, if you lay it perfectly flat, you're missing, honestly, it's like the first 16th. But if you're 
over the back edge of a table, right, starting back here, then yeah, you actually can do food prep with this, which is really cool. And even if you're right on, right on top of the surface, right, I mean, you could still, you could easily still do that. It's kind of nice. I appreciate that. Um, and not just with food prep, but there's other things that you might use this knife for that would, you know, that would make it good for that. And I appreciate it. It makes it cool. It makes it a good knife for like, you know, if you're, if you're going camping, um, and it makes it an excellent knife just for around the house. I mean, these blade shapes, this is a really nice, almost like a perfect sheep's foot blade, which is honestly just about ideal for EDC. We have a blade stock thickness that is not super thick and we have a fully flat ground blade with nothing in the cutting path except for this, you know, this uh, deployment hole here. Um, so we have a, a super duper utilitarian blade shape um, that's fairly strong just because of the, the nature of a sheep's foot blade. Um, we have a nice, uh, fairly high polish on this tumbled blade as well. So it's really going to pretty easily pass through material. Uh, this is a nice multi-purpose blade with an emphasis on, you know, stuff that you would use a knife for. And it is definitely slicey. I mean, you know, your, your uh, mileage is going to vary depending on what it is that you're cutting, but this is just really good. The inside of this hole here has been nicely knocked down, so you're not going to be shaving your fingernails every single time you deploy it. Same with this edge back here. This is all great. I really would have preferred some jimping up here, but it's not that big of a deal that we don't have it. Because this is not a super long blade, and the, uh, you know, just the nature of a sheep's foot blade is that the tip is angled down. You can get your finger up here for some nice draw cuts. It's just really, really good for EDC. Even though we do have scales that are curiously thicker than the blade, I kind of like that. You know, it makes me feel like I'm holding on to a almost full-size knife. Um, I think if they had gone thinner, it would have made it feel a little bit delicate. And this knife does not feel delicate. Uh, it feels capable. Not like a tank, but it, it feels capable. And the edge is thin enough that it, it's going to be able to do what you want it to do. I don't think we need to put the name of the knife on the knife. Black Mirror, like, I know what it's called because I bought it. I, ju I, don't, I just don't like it when we see the name of the, the knife on the knife itself, right? I just, I, it, I think that looks a little bit tacky. But it says Bowler M390 and that's fine, right? I think Max Ace does a pretty good job um, heat treating their steel. So I, I would assume that this is heat treated correctly, but I have no way to test that. I do not have that testing equipment. Um, the inlay work with this carbon fiber is good. It is lipped ever so slightly above the titanium and it is consistent all the way around, which tells me that that is on purpose. So that's fine. I like that they have sort of made room for the Chicago end of this screw and they've kind of, you know, uh, it, it goes around instead of just running directly in to the pivot or the pivot collar or running directly into the Chicago end of the screw. It, it sort of, you know, in a in a decorative way, moves around it. And I like that. I think it looks good. The inlay position is, is really nice. We have a little bit of a gear pattern backspacer that sticks ever so slightly above the scales. That's fine. Oh my gosh, where's the lanyard hole? Who cares? Uh, the pocket clip position is perfect because <laughs> we don't have to worry about something like a lanyard hole, right? Uh, carry depth, not completely and totally deep, but right there, medium, just about perfect. No, no issue there. Can't say that I love that it says Max Ace on the clip. I think if they, you know, maybe if like the logo, it's kind of like how, you know, on Vero Engineering, his logo is a big V and he sort of makes it line up with the, the clip itself, right? The, the V logo looks good on the clip because of the shape of the clip and the shape of the clip is meant to match the lines of the knife. So everything kind of flows together. The clip flows with the design, but slapping Max Ace on there on the clip just kind of, it doesn't look like it goes, right? So maybe if the, the logo was somehow matching the curvature of the clip and it was instead of the whole word Max Ace, it was just like an M or something like that, then maybe, right? But I mean, ideally, we just wouldn't have Max Ace on here. Uh, there's, there's, it's just a little bit too much billboarding, right? Um, so don't really like that. But the clip itself is wonderful. We have a nice ramp here. It's still fairly shallow, and like I said, the edges are all nicely knocked down. Uh, we do have a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. I really, really would have just been blown away if they had done those inlays on both sides and made this like a sub frame lock. 
um, uh, or made the overlay over most of the, like if they had just matched this, it would have just been oh, perfect, but it's fine like this. An exposed frame lock is not ideal, but it works, right? Um, as long as you don't mash that lock bar into the tang of the blade, you should be okay. We are locking up at, let's give it a good flick and then take a look. We're locking up at 40% eh, or so, and we are completely and totally solid, so that's good. No lock stick. Where's the stop pin? It's located right back here, and it is definitely robust with some nice shouldering, so that's good to see. Like I said, no lock stick, no pivot lash, very consistent here. There's even a little bit of a detent ramp, which is really cool. And then your actual detent strength. We have a nice click about medium, which is where it should be. Perfect centering with no detent lash. So what's special about it? The blade can be used for food prep. Not an ideal food prep knife, but it's kind of a food prep knife. No, let me tell you what's special about this freaking knife. It's $148. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now, to a lot of people, you're gonna go, okay, that's still a lot of money, right? Let me tell you, this thing's general competition, the average competition for this knife is about $250. I'm not making that up. It's di direct competition, averaged out, not even like the peak end. Direct competition is $100 more than this. Max Ace consistently brings us quality. Not just like, yeah, it's pretty good for the money. No, they bring us really, really good quality. And the pricing is always freaking mind-blowing. I mean, like everything that they do, even when they slap stuff like, uh, you know, Mokutai, or I'm sorry, it's like they did like a Mokume, Mokume gain inlay, and they did Timascus. Even when they're doing that stuff, we still see prices that are hundreds of dollars lower than their direct competition. This is... They're doing a lot of stuff that's similar to Riot quality, right? They're just charging way less than it. In fact, you know, as much as I love Wii and Bestech, and I think they're really, really good, they're substantial. You know, those those companies charge quite a bit less than Riot, but this this is under this is well under that. This is amazing. This is one of, and I know people are going to bring up Tucson. Well, Tucson does that. Tucson. I've handled two sun knives. I think they're fine. The the execution of the materials, it's not just the materials, right? It's how they are executed, right? It's the reason that sometimes, you know, when you when you were a kid and you went to play Legos with your friends, we're all working with the same Legos, but some of those some of my friends were a lot better at it than I was, right? So it's like I can make, I'm like, look at this house I made. And it's just a rectangle that's just rainbow colors, right? Wow, cool. And my friend over here has like a fully detailed pirate ship. You know, maybe he followed the instructions. I don't know. My point is, is that the execution of the materials can absolutely result in varying levels of quality, right? So what we have here is a better execution than what I am seeing from Tucson. But we're seeing a Tucson price tag. In fact, we're seeing a little bit less. I could not believe. The base price of this knife with no inlay is $142. With the inlay, it is $148. Uh, I know that Max Ace is definitely appearing on a few retailers here or there, but all of these major retailers should be carrying Max Ace. And if Max Ace keeps bringing this type of quality to the table and keeps charging the same amount, I mean, oh my gosh. This is insane. And listen, there's Max Ace currently has like five or six additional models that I am desperate to get my hands on. I've just look just looking through their website. I, I'm like, oh, I, I want I want to take a look at all this. This is insane, right? I'm always impressed by their pricing. And some of their knives are kind of extreme and over the top, but it's fun, right? This is an this is a, like an, a perfectly executed compact EDC knife where all of the design elements make sense. I wish that it was a subframe lock, right? But everything else is just right. I mean, this is, for a lot of people, this is gonna be a perfect EDC knife. It's a little bit awkward to flick out like that, but you'll get used to it, right? That uh, that deployment hole is substantially sized and really, you know, with the, the initial part of the blade contacting, you know, the surface that you lay it down on, I mean, minus maybe a 16th of an inch, that really, that's really nice. Nice touch. Um, this is a, an extremely recommendable knife. This is one of those like universally recommendable. For people 
who have been in the knife world for a long time and you're just looking for a good design that's got a good price on it, go for it. If you're somebody who's been hovering around the budget territory of the knife world and you're looking for your first premium knife, boy, this will set some kind of bar for you, right? I mean, I remember, now I compare so many things to the Ritter Hogue all the time because the pricing, now that's a USA made knife, right? The pricing, the execution, the design, all of that are just so good. This now, you know, it's almost like creates a new standard for me. Max Ace made this thing and put a $148 price tag on it. One of the best dollar for dollar knives on the market right now. This is freaking excellent. Max says, keep doing what you're doing and keep your pricing in check in a world where literally everything is massively overpriced right now. Man, it's just, they're gonna keep knocking it out of the park. Super recommendable. Max Ace Black Mirror, very impressive. Uh, if you can get your hands on it, highly recommendable. Like I said, links down below. If this guy's not available, check out the other stuff from Max Ace because everything they do is just amazing. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.